John 17 verse 3. You can write that down. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, and the one that you have sent, Jesus Christ. In essence, fathering. Even today as we look at fathering, we see the facet, the concept that God ordained, that he dreamt about in heaven. When Father in heaven decided, heaven alone is not what he wants. He wants a generation. He wants a group of beings that will call him Father. That will call him Father. And God says that is eternal life. To know the Father and the one, one who he has sent, Jesus Christ. The word says nobody knows the Father except the Son. John 1 verse 18. John 1 verse 18. Nobody has seen the Father. Nobody knows the Father except the Son who came from the bosom of the Father. He declared him. He showed him. Where even Jesus said in John 14. 7. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's what it's all about. Hello? When the Spirit of God gave you the rebirth of your spirit. Then what is happening in your spirit? You will call out what? You will call out all different stuff unto the Lord. No. You have not received the spirit of slavery to fear. But the spirit of sonship so that you will cry out through the Holy Spirit. Abba. Papa. Daddy. Father. The essence of the dream of the Father. Is he had a desire for human beings that will call him Father. For Father so loved the world. Everybody say, so loved. Not just he loved you. He so loved you that he gave everything. Everything. Everything in his son. And through his son. For God so loved the world. God the Father. That he gave his only begotten son. Not for God so loved the rubbish world and the rubbish we created. No, we need to hate the world. That world we need to hate, the world that we created. But the world that he dreamt about, the world that he's busy creating, that dream world, God so loved his dream world. God has such a passion for his dream. That dream world where we and are walking into more and more and more that he gave his son so that his dream will be fulfilled. So that his dream world will become a reality. The nations as his eternal home. The new Jerusalem. May God help you to walk more and more and more into this dream world that the Father has for you and me. Because he's passionate about that world. He's passionate. And be passionate about what your Father is passionate about. Amen. May God help you. My brother, my sister, even today as we stand about fathering. I say in the word... At the essence of it all, may Holy Spirit help you. How that to, through the word of God, see your Father's heart. See your Father's heart. You cannot touch the word without the Spirit. It's the most dangerous book. It's the most dangerous book. Don't touch the Bible. Don't touch the word of God without the Spirit. Because it will bring death in you. There's no stronger demonic force that could take Jesus into the place so blind, blinded than the religion religious guys the religious guys they knew how to judge they knew how to judge they were blinded enough and they had not a wrong scrolls they didn't have the wrong bible they had the right bible you have the accurate 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 word of God they had the accurate word but through that spirit of religion, they were so blinded that they thought they did God a favor by killing Jesus. Don't destroy what God is planting in you, what God is doing in you through the religion. We are not under the law. We're not under the law, but we are in the law. Why? If you love me, you will obey my teaching. Is that manipulation? You know, telling your wife, if you love me, you will make... Breakfast in bed every day. No, no, no. That's manipulation. When God says, if you love me, you will obey my teaching. He's talking about the quality love between you and your father. 
This is a type of quality love it will be. If, you, if your love is genuine for me as your God, then this will be the type of love. It will be a love where you obey my teaching. It will be a love where you will walk in my ways. It will be a love that through your lifestyle it will be seen that you will be driven by my passion, driven by my energy, and that is love. Hello. Are you with me? This love relationship between you and Father God. This love relationship between you and Father God. Let it be there. I bless you with that in Jesus' name. That when you say Father, it will not be a cheap word. Amen? Amen. We've done this before, but I quickly just want to mention the, the Ten Commandments. You're not under the law. Under the law of the Ten Commandments is your flesh. Under the law is where you put your flesh under the law. You have authority through the word against your flesh. So my flesh is under the law. The enemy must the come against you under the law. Your circumstances under the law. Your weaknesses under the law. In Jesus' name. Amen? So that you are protected against the rubbish. Protected by the authority of the word. That is like a law. You will bow, you will be still, you will be cast out. Hello? And so with the word of God as the armor of God, hey? The word of God on your head, not just the sword, remember? The helmet of salvation, that is with the word of God that everything is renewed up here. Breastplate of righteousness is with the word of God, that you find your righteousness in the word in Christ. Hello? The belt of truth, that's the word of God, closest to you. The shield of faith, faith comes from the hearing of the word of God. Shield of faith, the word. Sword of the spirit, that means you don't work. You don't fight with the word without the spirit. It's with the truth and the spirit. You stand with the sword, but there's, if you have the sword of the spirit in your hand and you deal with the word without the spirit, you will cut people into pieces. No, the word with the spirit it belongs to him. Hello? Ah, you remember that example. David, just quickly. You remember the example? Okay, stand here like with a sword. You remember that example? No, you stand with a sword. There you stand with a sword. It's not his sword. It's the sword of the Spirit. So you ask Holy Spirit to come. And the Holy Spirit with your hand, you are dealing with the sword in situations. Amen. Remember that. Remember that. Don't touch the word without the Spirit. Are you with me? And the shoes are the readiness of the gospel. What gospel? With the word. The shoes is the word that must go. And because the word of God must go, therefore you go. You go into a place. You go into OK. You go into checkers. You go into that place because the word must be there. So somewhere you're going to give somebody a word. Don't say you must freak out and be super spiritual with every guy walking past you. But maybe they, you are not just there to buy bread and eggs. You are there in somewhere. Oh, man, just somewhere. Hey, God, who can I just say that you are so precious to Christ? God has your number. Hmm. God loves you. He has a passion. He, he dreams about you. Just say something to someone about Father. Amen. How did we get into the armor? Okay. So it's all about... That how you deal with the word, it's with the spirit. So if you have the, the armor of God, and then it ends off with, while you are praying in the spirit. With the armor of God, soldier, you are positioned in prayer. You can have the whole armor on, and just sit in the bathroom. Your whole life. Hallelujah. But only if you can understand prayer and how to be led by the Spirit through prayer, you will be positioned in the right place with the whole armor of God on, and you will stand. And you will stand. You will stand in the name of Christ. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. We are talking about the Word. You are in the Word. You are in the armor of God. You have it on you. Yeah, you're walking in it. You are standing with it. You're standing by faith. You are fighting with it. You have it over your mind, in your mindset. 
at the end of the day, the new covenant, God will write his laws. Are you under the law? No, you are in the law, and the law is in you. He will write his laws in your heart and in your mind. Your father, he will do it when you commit really to him with an open heart. He will do it. Allow him to do that. My brother and my sister, allow him to do it. And then what will he do? He will forgive you and he will not remember your iniquity anymore. What does that mean? God chooses to forget. Oh, it's okay to forget. But just uh, please forget the right things. <laughs> there's some stuff that you must forget and there's some stuff that you must focus on. And you know, in our lives, how will we do it? With your father's talking on fa about Father's Day. You need to honor your father and your mother if they were right or wrong. You honor it because, not because they were right. You honor because God said honor. And that's the only one of the Ten Commandments with a promise. The only one. If you want to reach the destiny that I have for you, God says, then you need to honor. When you judge, you will lose your destiny. You will die in the desert. When you honor in spite of mistakes, you will reach your destiny. And judging, instead of honor, judging is not you're going to burn in hell. Judging is, I will never be like that. I will never be like that. Hello? Instead of, God, if it's not for your grace, I will do it ten times worse. We can boast in nothing except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6.14. Amen? Are you with me? So when talking about the Ten Commandments, from a father to a child, many times there's discipline. If you love me, the father, when he loves the child, he will, there will be discipline. Not be disciplined because of mistakes, but discipline because of potential. Because the father believes in the child. If you're not an illegitimate child, if you're a fake child, no discipline. If you're a genuine child of God, discipline will come. Because Father wants to nail you on all the mistakes. No, because Father believes in you. Because Father believes in you. We always say the guy going to the Olympics with a running, if he has the potential, the coach will, <laughs> he will give him discipline. You will not do this, you will do that. You will not do this, you will do that. This time you will be there. This you will eat, that you will not eat. This is how you will do this, 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 this. Why? Because you want to nail him. No, because he has a major potential. And the coach can see it. How many athletes, how many sport guys, and then they say, because the coach believed in me. He could give himself because the coach believed in him. Your father believes in you. Therefore, they can be disciplined. Therefore, they will be disciplined because your father believes in you. Every child that he accepts as a genuine child, he will discipline. Every child that he's excited about, that means every child that he loves, he will give discipline. So trust God that you will see his discipline. So God, the discipline in the essence of Ten Commandments, where these guys for 400 years in slavery, they don't know left from right. They don't know up from down. They know nothing. They come out as slaves. Yes, the circumstances changed. With circumstances changed, they're out in the desert. Yes, they saw the wonders of God. They can wow. They can have respect for God. And their circumstances change. But this needs to change. Here. And God gives, he gives ten commandments. To give them, give him a line, a boundary for him and them. But they saw more. The letter of the law that kills instead of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So please, my brother, take the ten principles. Uh, who remember we had the five and the five? Okay. The first five about God and you. Second five about you and your neighbor. So the first five, you'll have no other God before me. You shall serve no other God. What is God saying? In this relationship, it's me and you and nobody else. No other God. No, it's not like we make a God and say, I will serve this God. No. 
But God is the one that you focus on. You focus on the stress. You focus on the anxiety. Anxiety is your God. You deal with it in an accurate way. Yes, you don't lie about what you feel. But at the end of the day, you overcome it with truth. The truth of the word. Amen. Are you with me? You'll have no other gods before me. So it's not your image. It's not how you come across. Not the fear. It's not the intimidation. It's not your circ You focus more on your circumstance. Your circumstances is the God that you will also serve. God says no one. Not even your circumstances can be your God. Not your logic. Not your success can be your God. In this relationship, it is me and you. If it's going to work, it's me and you and nobody else. You will have no other gods. Second one. You will not bow before anything that you make. And you will love, not that, but you will love me. And I will bless generation upon generation upon generation upon generation the ones that love me. God says in this relationship, there will be a passion and there will be a wow. You will be captured by me. You will worship me. And there will be a passion. You will love me. First, no one else, me and you. Secondly, there will be passion, and I, you will be captivated by me. You will wow about me, worship me alone. And you will love me. There will be a passion in here. Amen. Third one, you will not use my name in vain. Okay. Words is the overflow of the heart. In your heart, there will be a respect for me. The fear of the Lord will be upon you. That you will walk with me if you understand or not. Because you respect me, you will follow me. You will not my, use my name in vain. Because you, but you will respect my name. That's why hell must try and put that name as a swear word everywhere. Because that name above all names. You know the enemy exposes himself. How do we say a strategy boomerangs? Where hell? You don't find a false 11 rand because there's no true 11 rand. So the fact that he does not create a false 11 rand proves there's no genuine 11 rand. That's why you will not find somebody getting angry in a movie and he says, Buddha. You don't find a guy and he's angry and he says, Muhammad. But when he's angry, he will say, Jesus. Hello? Because that name, hell wants to attack that name as far as possible. As long as the people don't have respect for that name. As long as the people don't understand the meaning of that name. Hello? You will not use the name of the Lord in vain. So when we, uh, in the glass palace. What's the glass palace? The municipality? Yeah, at the glass palace, yeah. That place. When we had to go there for the final clearance to have a Christian school, a permit, permit to have a school on farm ground, and we came to this one guy, and this guy was, ah, yes, yes, and this, and then he, when he started by the third one, I just said, no, 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 this is not how it's going to work. I said, and when he said, yes, I said, yes, he loves you. And then he said, yes, man, he died for you. So I would throw in every time. I mean, he used that name over a hundred times. But I would throw in the whole time something about it. <sighs> that the man was so uncomfortable later about. I said, no, I see you use the name of the Lord. And uh, you must speak to him. But, but use more vocabulary, more, you know, uh, communicate then more if you want to speak to the Lord. You know, then use it in that way. And the enemy doesn't like that. You, when you use that name with faith, how the enemy cannot steal from you anymore. But the guy was so uncomfortable later. But what I'm saying is, when you hear the name of Jesus, you use it in an accurate way. You're in a movie, they use the name, you walk out. But when you stand up, you say, yes, I love him. I dare you. I dare you. When somebody says, yes, yes, that's my Lord, I love him. And then you walk out. You're not walking out judging. But they will remember. 
at freaky Christians, you know. And isn't that one of those? Next time when they say Jesus in the movie, that atheist sitting, you will remember this guy was standing up and saying, yes, I love him. He's my Lord. That guy will never forget, man. Until he becomes 80, he will never forget in that movie what happened there. May God use you. Every situation, whatever the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it for our good and for the good of those who hear it. His name. Don't use the Lord, name of the Lord in vain. Respect for God. Amen. Number four, you will, th- you will keep the Sabbath. God says, I'm in charge of your time. Time is an opportunity given by me to you. So if Holy Spirit says to you, tonight two hours of prayer. Hallelujah. Or this other day, take time in my word. Or take this rest. Or Holy Spirit says, this five hours Go and take out cocky balls from the farm. Hallelujah. Or this one hour, do this. Or this two hours, do that. Or f- take 10 minutes and phone a few people and encourage them. Send them a few voice notes. That is God in charge of your time. God controlling your time. That was the whole heart and the concept with the Sabbath. Yes, you must have time to rest and make sure. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit could say, you know, you need to take time off. Now, don't come to me, all the Kriari leaders. No, the Holy Spirit told me I must take off a week, you know. Did he tell you paid leave or what? <laughs> what I'm saying is be led by the Spirit. Amen. Time, too many times, time is the excuse. God gave time as an opportunity, not as an excuse. The only way we can use time in a wrong way is because our priorities is not right. They're not right. May God help you that time will serve you. Time will serve you for the opportunities God is giving you here on earth. Okay, that's number four. This is all about you and God. God says it's me and you alone. God says there's passion, love and worship. Hello? God says... You will respect it from your heart, in your words. There's no cheap words. No cheap words. You will not use my name in vain. Number four, my time, I give you. Time is your opportunity with me here on earth. Number five, honor your father and your mother, and you will inherit what I have for you. Oh, but that's about people around you. No, no, no. God end off in his, the five facets about him and you. He end off with a promise and says, if you can honor your father and your mother, in spite of their mistakes, then you will run into the destiny that I have for you. David? Okay, David is my dad today. Okay, there, David, you stand there. And so, remember, we did this a few times, 300 times already. And so, if he messes up with me, I'm his child, and he messes up, he make a hell of a rubbish, a lot of mistakes. If I do this, whatever he did, I draw it into me as a, as a generational curse and I, so that I can do it ten times worse. But if I honor, I'm protected against his mistake and I can, learn from, I can learn from the mistakes and I can build on his strong points. If I honor, because whatever is promised through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, down in the generations, that promises is yes and amen in Christ Jesus for my life if I honor. Hello. In honoring, I take the promises that God has for me. And I can inherit the destiny. I can go through the desert, but a desert is going through. It's not where I die. But do this. And the curse is there. You will die in the desert. Thank you. Are you with me? So God says, I have an excellent future for you. But understand my promises is working through the generations. Because grandma's grandma's grandma, she prayed. And there's a lot of prayers in the spirit that's there, like this cloud. Your grandmother prayed, but the child and the grandchild messed up. And there you are, great grand's child. And when you honor your dad, whatever grandmother's grandmother prayed for, it can happen into your life. David, he had to fight. He had to fight. 
And he had to fight. And he had to fight. Well, uh, it was the Philistines and the Amalekites and the this and the that and the that. And when he had a son that will not judge him, that don't want to slaughter him, and he had the son that will honor him, he could receive and inherit what his dad fought for. for. Now that is you, when grandma had the fight in the spirit. Hello? You remember? Then you can inherit. So Solomon just come in and he can build. All the resources, they're there. Everything is there. There's peace. There's no Philistine that dare come close to Solomon. He can just go full out with what God has for him. So maybe in your life, my brother, my sister, there's challenges. Guys in Ukraine, there's a lot. There's millions of people today that can put a question mark against God is not a good father. What father is there that will allow the granny to be blown up in pieces, for the children to die there under the rubble, for the this, for the that, all in Ukraine and the different places? What good father will allow that? My brother, my sister, there's so many things that we don't understand. So many things. But if we can focus on God, you're a good, good father. And for a trillionth of 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 this life on earth, in this world you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. I have not overcome the world so that you don't have trouble. I have overcome the world so that in the trouble you will have grace, grace, grace to overcome. To overcome the impact of the world on you. Not to overcome the world, that the world's circumstances, everything change. No, you've overcome the world that the world will not overcome you. So that you will not be a product of the world. You will be in the world, but not from the world. John 17. Amen? Allow God to do that. You honor your mom and dad based on truth. Based on fact. Everybody make mistakes. Every father sitting here, you know you made a lot of mistakes already. And but by God's grace, through his blood, tomorrow can be a new day. A new day. Amen. Praise God for his awesome, awesome grace. Amen. Go and give that phone call to your dad. Go and write a letter to him. If he's already in heaven, write a letter and pray with someone. Where you not just say, I forgive you for what you've done wrong, but forgive me for not always respecting and honor you, honoring you. You need to release that so that your destiny is not cursed to die in the desert. Are you with me? Not doing it as a trick, but as a principle. Because God said so. Now that's the five things about you and God. First commandment, you and him alone. Second one, there's passion, there's love, there's a, a being arrested by him. Love and worship. Third one, not use his name in vain. There's no cheap words. There's no cheap words. You will respect him from your heart. Your heart will be involved. Fourth one, the time I give you on earth, that's an opportunity, not an excuse. Number five, respect the ones that I gave you. Because there's promises through Abram in for the nations that I have for you. And you cannot inherit it if you don't honor. That's God and you. The next five is you and you, those around you. And it's not first just about your performance towards her. You're not allowed to do this. You cannot 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 do that. Okay, that's one way of seeing it. The other way around of seeing it is, you are so precious to me. Nobody is allowed to kill you. You shall not kill. You are so precious. Nobody can break their covenant relationship with you. You are so precious. Nobody is allowed to steal from you. You are so precious. Nobody can give false witness about you. You are so precious. Nobody can desire and covet the things that I give you. That's the other side of the coin. If you understand the heart of God. God, is there's a certain quality that you will live on with one another. They will know you are my disciples, Jesus says, if you have love for one another. Amen. So number six is, thou shalt not kill. Now maybe one, not one of us really killed somebody. 
But you know, life and death in the power of the tongue. You can kill with your tongue. You can speak death. You can say, yeah, government, they're all just corrupt. Government, they're all just corrupt. Says who? God has a Daniel, God has a Joseph in there. And they are struggling to stand in the name of Christ. But they must stand. Hopefully there's some brother, some, some Christian that can support them with life that they speak. Hello? Thou shalt not kill your brother and your sister that is standing in the name of the Lord there to make a difference. Those guys can be corrupt. But you are slaughtering your brother. With your words, by saying everybody's corrupt. Everything is just corrupt. Be careful with your everything. That church, they are all like that. Says who? Did the Holy Spirit show you that? Thou shalt not kill with your mouth either. You will not commit adultery. First of all, you and God, you are in marriage. You will stay faithful to him, even though you don't understand. You know, in relationships, if we don't understand what the other guy is doing, we think, that guy is crazy. And many times then we withdraw our hearts. I will give my heart when I understand me and you. When I understand our relationship. When I understand you. But if I don't understand you and I think, this is not right. This is, I can easily withdraw. You will not understand many things that God will be doing. And you cannot withdraw your heart from him. But also so with brothers and sisters, with your spouse, with your kids, with your parents. You cannot withdraw your heart. I don't say you must have an intimate relationship with everybody. Please not. It's not you must open up your heart and you, the things in your life with everybody. No. My thumb has a certain relationship with the rest of my hand. But my thumb has a different other relationship with my feet. But he will not fight the feet and judge the feet. Body against itself. That's cancer. No. It will not be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thou shall not kill. That's, you'll be protected against the, what people would say over your life. No. People must speak life over you. They must pray for you. They must bless you. They must not. Hello? And second one, they must be loyal to you. Loyalty must be there as if unto the Lord. Third one, they shall not steal. They shall not steal what belongs to you. I always use that example about uh, the spar. And I always say Brantford by coincidence. But, you know, you want to open up the supermarket, this big supermarket. And here you come and you pray that the Lord will bless you. But in the process, this Greek... Uh, fruit and veg shop is going under and that shop is going under and that shop is going under thank you lord because you bless me my blessing means that they must go under that guy who worked very hard in the name of the lord for 30 years he must go under he, suddenly there's no uh, finances for the old day there's no finances for the kids to go and study at university and you say hallelujah because of your hallelujah they are crushed Thou shalt not steal. That means where you open your business, in what you do, you must ask God how and in what way. Must you maybe go to Mr. Greek and tell him, what is your speciality? No, we have a little shop and, and we do the pies. And we have this and uh, there's a certain, we have this contact about bananas and, and spinach and uh, blah, 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 bread and uh, whatever. So maybe this shop of yours must not sell bananas and spinach. And if you have the takeaway, maybe trust God. God, what must we focus on? That we don't do the pies. What you sow, you will reap. Live and let live. Not live and let die. Don't steal from others. Everybody, there's an African saying, Elkin et a plaki in his son. Why do you say that in English? Very nice. Is it also a saying? You don't know? Okay. But uh, you understand. Everybody has a place under the sun. Okay? May God help you. Thou shalt not steal. And first of all, actually, you shall not steal his honor. 
Give honor where honor is due. Serve. Bless others. Thou shalt not steal. I, I get uh, somebody give me a million rand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then you get the million rand and God says, this is not yours. You are just the, the postbode. What is the postbode? The, the postman. Something like that. You are just the postman. Oh, oh, this million, uh, half of it must go to Ukraine, and then you must split it up in this and this, and they must get that, and that, 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 that. Sure. Oh, just for the sake of taking time. Let me tell that story for the 90th time. So, uh, six months Bible school uh, in Agape before two years army. God says, no work, you, that's it. And uh, a lot of stuff happens, sometimes for a week or two, no food. And uh, not so lucky to go on a fast like that, but that's it. And somebody give me, I can't remember, let's say 180 rand. And uh, those days it were a lot, 1987. Then you were just a dream in the heart of the Father, most of you guys. <laughs> hallelujah. And in 1987, and I'm hallelujah and going over the bridge there at the showgrounds. Um, I remember going there and I'm going to buy something to eat. I'm hungry. And God says, These, this money belongs to that lady in that car. Who knows? Remember the story. One, two, three, four. The, this money belongs to that lady in that car. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so now I'm behind this lady. And you can see at one stage she's looking, who is now here? <laughs> and there where you find hyper, turn to the right, there into a neighborhood. I said, God, She's living in an okay place, a neighborhood. What now? And I stopped far from her. I said, don't, don't worry. I just want to give you something that God showed me. Said, oh, I was worried. And blah, blah, blah. And um, came and said, I need to give you this money. She started to cry. He said, we are supporting a family that has no work with small kids. And my husband told me, if you're going to give them money again, there will be trouble in this marriage. And I had to go and tell them, no money anymore. And the kid is looking at me with such an expectation for food. And I had to tell them nothing and turn around away, seeing those faces of those kids. And she was in the car crying out to God. She said, God, this is not right. This is not right. And she was praying in the car and crying out to God. God, speak to that guy in that car and say, you have money, give it to her. Hello. So we went into the house. I spoke to the, the father, the husband. I explained, and then he said, Shoo, I can see. And I say, God has a plan. And God expects of you guys to support still. Please, for the season, hear from God. But this is necessary still. And the dad said, okay, now you can see that. In the way God supernaturally did it. So I gave him the money. But that little kiddies, man, that evening, when they would look up to the sky... Look at the stars. Know that my father spoke to a stranger to give to my auntie that money to get us food when we cried out to him. Hello. I don't know who those guys are, but they know that their father can provide. Their father God. Live in such a way to trust God to be such a testimony. Amen? You will not be a false witness in the name of the Lord. Don't bear false witness against your brother. You're a false witness when you cannot live the testimony of Christ. You come with a message of reconciliation. You're a false witness if you cannot live the message of Christ. If you are friends, but you never put the name of Jesus on your lips with people where you work, where you study, with friends, you never put the name of Jesus. You're a false witness. The ninth commandment. You're supposed to be blessed with genuine witnesses around you that is living Christ and ambassadors of Christ towards you as ambassadors of Christ towards you. That is how God wants to bless his children. He wants true ambassadors of who he is around you so that you will be blessed with what he has for your life. But in the right way. And the last one, you will not covet that man's Wife or 
car or whatever. You shall not. You are excited that God, when somebody has a breakthrough, God has provided for that person. Oh, I'm so excited. I prayed for this and I got this Ferrari. Oh, and I'm praying for 15 years and I don't have a good follower even. <sighs> don't covet. But be excited about your... God says you must be excited about one another, excited about that one's blessing excited about that breakthrough you must be excited about everyone you're in a different phase hello the hand is very jealous because the head got a very nice hat the hand is jealous on the shoe of the feet but it will not work it's not going to work for you. You will not be able to function with the blessing of a very nice shoe over your hand. There's reasons with certain things, but be excited about your brother and your sister about what God is giving you them. If you're not getting excited, but feel a little bit huff, muff, huff. Oh, very nice. <laughs> but a little bit muff inside you. You are coveting. How must God bless you? How must he bless you? You first bless them with not with an excitement, with a faith, with a love. But if you keep things against people, hello, you remember a beautiful people, uh, it's a very old movie about all the animals. Who knows that movie? Yeah. And then in the movie, it's about a lot of animals. And then the, the, the Makwara ma, ma, Kwara, why do they call that guy? It's, it's some. Some guy in the Namib desert, some tribe. So when they want to find out where's the water, they look for a baboon. <laughs> okay, don't go and do it tomorrow. It's not the strategy for you. So he looks for a baboon, and then he waits for the baboon to sit there, and, and, and they are in this ant hill or some other termite hill or whatever. And he takes salt. And he put it in there. And a baboon, very inquisitive. Now, this is what the guys really did. Very inquisitive. And he waits till the baboon can see. And then he put in, and he put some salt in there. But he makes the hole, the hole is just as big as this. That your hand will not be able to come out if you keep the salt in there. Hello? So... Then he stands one side, and baboon came, looked into the hole, put his hand in there, and he got the salt, and he couldn't get his hand out. He's stuck. He's stuck. Hello? So we are stuck when we have the issue with people, and we don't forget, don't, don't forgive, you know? Oh, I forgave him. But if you are focusing too much on what he did, then your forgiveness is cheap. Hello? But they were stuck. So the man came, catch the baboon, put him against uh, a tree, and then he gave him the salt. And he gave him salt and salt and salt. And the baboon eats. Oh, lack of salt, lack of salt, lack of salt. And then he left him there. And the next morning, that baboon is thirsty. And then he loosen the baboon and he just followed him because the baboon know exactly where is that secret water in that region where he must go and he had to follow him just and there he had the water he knew where the water was where to find water in that region where he was passing through hello the bottom line of this very interesting nice clever story is don't be like the baboon with you know sitting there and only thing you need to do is let it go forgive him forgive her let the hardness of heart go let the judgment go let the let the hello but a nurse let it go so that you can take your hand out and be set free don't be a pawn for the for the for the enemy's plan what he wants to do with you what he throws at you 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 just go for that Everybody do this. Oh, oh. 
Some baboons, they make that sound, hey. Okay. <laughs> so don't be like that thing, that baboon. Okay, please. Sitting with your stuffies that you hold against people. That's the Ten Commandments. My brother and my sister, you are not under the law. Your flesh, your sin is under the law. You stand with authority against those rubbish and what the world wants to throw at you. Hello? You're not without the law, but that is uh, like fornication, this los bandigheid. Los bandigheid. But you are in the law. You are in the heart of God in the word. Come to know that, and you will know your Father. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to know you. Thank you for the, your precious, precious word. God, and that you will come just and set us free with the truth from the facts. That even if the facts will not change, Lord, that we, even like Habakkuk, we will, doesn't matter if the facts change, we will still rejoice in you. The truth. You are the truth. We will rejoice in you. God, we will stand in the watchtower. We will stand in the truth to look beyond, above our circumstance, to see what you will say. To see what you will say. To understand what you are saying. We will not just hear what you are saying. We will see what you are saying. Help us, Lord, in that place. I pray for that mercy, the grace on each one of us sitting here, Lord. And that each one here will so come to know you as Father. So that tomorrow we can have eternal life quality. Eternal quality life. As we walk with you in our situations. To see, Father God, what, does you, what do you want to do in every of our situations? What do you want to do with our success? What do you want to do with our weakness? What do you want to do with the intimidating uh, circumstances that we need to face? I pray that, God, that your mercy and your grace will be so on every man, every woman in this place. In Jesus' name and that name alone. And all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.